What's good, everybody? This is Ryan Johnson with MoneyBass.com. All right, guys, we are back at it again. What is going on, guys? We are here to check out and take a look at the Bassmaster Classic taking place in Tulsa, Oklahoma at Grand Lake. How are your favorite anglers out there doing on the field? Well, the lake. All right, there we go. So shout out to the Facebook crew. You guys are up and running over there. All right, so what we're going to do, guys, let's go ahead and get straight into an interesting topic that has been talked about and talked about and talked about again. But there's a guy named Hank Parker that has stepped into the mix and decided to offer his thoughts with all of his years of experience. And he is, uh, you know, well respected in the fishing industry. So what people are saying is. You know, his thoughts and opinions on it carry a lot of weight. And I would say he did make some great points. So I'm going to play some a little bit of that video where he was uh, mentioning his thoughts on Fort Facing Sonar and kind of get your opinions on it. And the other thing that I do here, guys, is drop the live call in link. So if you are watching this on the replay, remember, it is always best to catch these on the live because we are very interactive. I drop the call in link, which means when you click on that, I can bring you up on the screen and, you know, you can voice your thoughts and opinions on the subject that we are talking about. I'll drop you down and then we move on to the next person. So, you know, we try to have some fun with everything over here. All right. So who has already taken a look at this clip right here. So it was kind of a having Hank Parker in the hot seat for the moment. And that's pretty much what this is going to be. And of course, we know the leader of the pack as far as the Fort Facing Sonar live scope debate goes is Randy Blockett. Randy Blockett is everywhere. Of course, he's at the Classic because everybody is speaking about him. Of course, they're talking about him at the Classic. So yeah, he may not be there in person, but he is definitely there in spirit <laughs> because there's a lot of conversations going on. All right, let's see. All right, so let, let's take a look and see what the first comment is. Samuel says, Hank Parker hit the nail on the head. I've been saying the same thing for six months. Let's just take it away for 2025 and compare both years. Okay, all right. All right, all right. So let's go ahead and, and take a listen, guys. And just listen to any points that may stand out to you in his answer to this question. And then, again, the call-in link is in the chat. If anybody wants to come up, you know, just have some fun. I mean, it's an interesting debate. So whether you are for or against or, hey, you think there should be some type of compromise, just go ahead and click the the uh, the uh, call-in link. We did have um, – goodness, I can't believe I forgot. Uh, was it uh, Chase Outdoor Adventures that called in yesterday? And uh, one or two other guys. But, yeah, so let's make it interesting, guys. But let's go ahead and take a listen and see what Hank Parker has to say about the Fort Facing Sonar debate, guys. Wow. So, all right, last question. Do you think there should be a fishing league with no use of electronics? I would not say no use of electronics. I would say forward facing sonar. Now, this is going to get real controversial, and I tried not to enter this arena. I tried not to throw my hat into the ring. I've listened to Randy Blockett. I like Randy. Randy and I are friends. And to be honest, I thought Randy was a little bit uh, too critical. But the more I listen to him and the more I look at what's going on, I'm tending to agree with him. Now, I've never thought that Randy was being, as some people have said, over the top and just bitter. I've never thought that. I've always known he's been heavily opposed, but I didn't really see the amount of change that forward-facing sonar was bringing to fishing. And there are a lot of people out there that are winning tournaments today that really are not very versed in the sport of fishing. They really don't know very much. And if you took that forward facing sonar away from them, they wouldn't really know what to do. Mm. And there are a lot of great fishermen that are now depending on forward facing sonar that do know what to do, but they don't do nothing else because it's such a proven method for catching big fish. So I honestly think truthfully, it is hurting our sport. I think it's hurting our sport in a lot of ways. One, it's expensive. And high school fishing is very near and dear to my heart. And 
there may be one or two kids that their dad has forward facing sonar. The rest of the kids, the boats don't have them. And the kids that have them are dominating. And so now the other dads and the other boaters feel like we're going to have to add that. And the cost is prohibiting for a lot of them. So the playing field is no longer level. I just think it's it's hurting. People are not buying lures like they used to buy lures. They're just buying things that are compatible with forward face and sonar. And I think it's hurting our sport. Uh, I've said you could not stop technology. And a friend of mine said, you're right, you can't. But do you realize that there is a rubber compound that they can put in a golf ball and make that golf ball, golf ball go 30% further mm. or put it in a baseball with the same impact from the bat, it'll go 30 to 35% further than a current baseball. Mm. That's technology. But the Major League Baseball League said no. It will ruin our sport. It will make our stadiums obsolete. It'll make all the history of home runs absolutely obsolete. The PGA says it will destroy all the history of golf. So, no, we're not going to allow it. And as I think about that, that's almost where fishing is today. Major League Fishing, bass, they're going to have to really look at this thing closely and say, okay, nothing wrong with technology, but it's messing up our sport. And we, we're going to have to regulate it and disallow it at some point in time. And it's not going to do anything but get more advanced. I work for Humminbird. I love Humminbird. They have worked so hard to develop this, and, and, and it's a part of competition. But I don't think anybody, I know I haven't, has really sat down from a technical standpoint and say, you know, this could jeopardize our sport. It, it could really hurt things. I think that's where we're at. I, I think it's hurting things. I, I think we're going to have to stop at some point, step back and take a look and say, we're going to have to disallow it. Mm -hmm. So as far as electronics, no, I think we need to know how deep it is. Maps, I think from a safety standpoint, maps are so incredibly important. It's mm -hmm. really made our sport safer. But forward facing sonar, when you're looking at fish live and watching your bait and watching them come eat it, it's changed the whole face of the sport. So I think we're going to have to do something about it. All right. Wow. Wow. What do you guys think about that? Hold on one second. Did he say that? Hold on. Maps are so incredibly important. It's really map. So as far as electronics, no, I think we need to know how deep it is. Maps, I think that's where we're at. I, I think it's hurting things. Real important thing. You know, this could jeopardize our sport. It, it could really hurt things. I think that's where we're at. I, I think it's hurting things. I, I think we're going to have to stop at some point, step back, and take a look and say we're going to have to disallow it. So it oh, my goodness. He did say it. He said, disallow it, guys. All right. So there you have it. So he's forward with, he's uh, <laughs> kind of lost for work. So he is basically saying straight out, go ahead and disallow it. Disallowing. He didn't say compromise. He didn't say any of that. He said disallow it. So that is total removal to just disallow. I mean, you guys heard the same thing I did, right? All right. So that call in link, if anybody wants to call in and voice your thoughts and opinions on that, I mean, go ahead and hit the link and I'll bring you up. You can voice your thoughts and opinions on it. Um, but let's hop back into the chat real quick and see what you guys have to say about what you just heard. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what you guys are talking about in the chat. Always interested in the chat. This is one of the best chats on YouTube, guys. Make sure you tune in on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, where we talk about a lot of different topics. Today, of course, I'm just doing some pop-up live streams. I did uh, maybe two yesterday. Um, one now, and I'll probably do another one a little later, but Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern is our normal normal allotted time, guys. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed. If you like these type of um conversations, 
topics and discussions that we have. All right, so let's see. So Samuel says, listen closely at the new rubber compound that um, Major League Baseball, uh, what is it, MLB and the PGA said about allowing that technology into their sports. Okay, all right. So, yeah, so basically they were saying about the advancements in technology will allow both the baseball and the golf ball to be hit 30% farther. All right, so Jason Ball says, if you take it away, there will be um, different, uh, let me see, there will be different like taking sticks away from drag racing. Wait a second. I, oh, slicks, slicks. Hey, guys, my eyes, a, little, a little blurry. All right, all right, gotcha. All right, taking the slicks away. All right, gotcha. All right, so Samuel also says volume up a little. So that volume, that is basically the way the volume of that video was. I tried to turn it up a little bit for you. All right, so Kevin, two fishes. What is two fishes? Shout out to the money team. All right, he says... Hank's words should hold a ton of merit with his accomplishments in the fishing industry. That is true. I mean, people that have been in, in it for a while, of course, they should have some, um, you know, people should take heed to the things that they say. But as we know, as technology advances, people forget about the things of the past and they only look forward at the things that are moving forward. Uh, uh, the things of the past and only look forward at the things that are coming and where they're currently at. So the other day, what I will tell you as an example is for me, um, me and my son, we just decided to go for a walk and we walked from here. I'm not sure how many miles we walked, but he was complaining and everything at first. And so it kind of made me think about the advancements in technology. I mean, he's used to hopping in a car and we're just taking off or going to a store or going wherever we want to go. So as we're walking, I mean, I'm trying to point out, hey, do you hear the birds? Do you see the ant piles? Do you see the? So we're just, you know, I'm just kind of pointing out different things, trying to get his mind off of his iPad and off of the technology that he is used to to see how he would, you know, kind of start taking in some of these things. So it was kind of a battle and it kind of reminds me of this. Once certain things are introduced, then the people that know that, the people that are going to be coming after us, they're not necessarily going to want to go back and plant their own gardens or walk to the store and enjoy the sounds of the birds and things like that of the outdoors in the same way that we see it. So I think that's part of the battle that we're going to be uh, fighting also. All right. So let's see, guys, let's uh, finish taking a look at some of these uh, chats and then we'll pull up that leaderboard and see how things are looking. All right. So the call in link, if anybody wants to call in, the call in link is there. I do think this is a very interesting conversation, though, guys. All right, let's see. So Ken says, hey, um, Hank forgets how many fishermen cried when the industry went from flasher units to paper graphs and started blowing the field away. Hey, I remember a friend of mine, he was talking about he actually had one of those paper graphs. I think he I think he said he still has it. All right. But yeah, so that is the thing. Every with every step of technology, there's always going to be resistance to change with that. All right. So Chad says, I do like Brandon Cobb's idea for facing sonar every other tournament. So the angler of the year would be a true angler of the year, not winning using one technique every tournament. All right. All right. Ken says, boy, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. All right. Let's see. Stefan says he's not wrong. All right. So he's agreeing with um, Hank Parker on that one. All right. So Sammy says Kyoto Fujita. All right. So he's so we'll take a look at his stats in just a second. All right. Ken said he's wrong. Wait a minute. Uh oh. Stefan says he's not wrong. Ken said he's wrong. And I think Ken, we're kind of going back to Ken is saying that, hey, every step of the way there's been technology, people are going to complain about it and saying basically the sky is falling. The world is over. It's coming to an end. Yes, sir. We're all goners. So I guess there's a he's wrong and he's right type thing going on. But if you guys want to come up, I'll drop the call in link again one more time. Of course, feel free to hit that. Make sure you are cammed up and I will pull you up so you can kind of state your opinion, guys. We're just having some fun with it. It's just sharing some thoughts and ideas on different topics. It's all good. All right. Let's see. Where were we at, guys? Let me find my spot. All right. Let's see. All right. So Chad says Hank is a good old head. He's he's uh, solid with it. Lifetime hummingbird guy, but says no fort facing sonar. That is correct. Yeah. The old schoolers don't like the live scopes. They don't like it. They don't like the advancements in the technology. It's changing things. All right. But is it for the better or for the worse? I mean, we want the sport to grow, but do we only want it to grow in the way that we want or not at all? Hmm. What do you guys think? What do you think? I'm looking in here. I'm trying to see what you got, what you're thinking out here. All right. The Michigan outdoorsman says, I think because the younger generation can compete, it's got the older generation feeling some type of way. If you know what I'm saying, if you know what he's saying, all right, they're not liking it. 
They're getting stumped out here sometimes. They're not liking it. All right, let's see. Let's see. Mark says, when side imaging um, came out, the units were 2,500 to 4,500, and the opponents said it was too much. There is not a bass boat without one. That is correct. So, yeah, so the prices of the electronics has been an issue for a while, not just with Fort Face and Sonar. And in a sense, Fort Face and Sonar, now you can get those units for what, guys? I mean, I think some people were saying they were picking up the, the unit and the graph for, what were they saying, like $1,500, $1,600? I mean, I guess it's all relative. To some people, $50 may be a lot of money. Other people, that $2,000 may, see, may be, you know, just like, hey, an, another weekend, another weekend of fun. All right, so Ken says, uh, let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can't forget Eat Squawk. Shout out to the money team. Really appreciate you. Aren't you supposed to be out there putting in some work at the Bassmaster Classic? What is going on? All right. So Hank is one of my favorite anglers, but uh oh, cannot agree with him on this. I think he hit the nail on the head when he said that. But the more he listens to Randy, the more he believes it. He's believing it. All right. It's the echo chamber. All right. So you're thinking he's getting sucked and in, vacuumed into the, e the echo chamber of everything. All right. So let's see. What else do we have? Ken says, Hank eventually got the paper back. <laughs> got the, what is that? The paper back and caught up with the industry. Then it was okay. Okay. All right. So you're saying once people kind of ease into it and they get, you know, they start understanding the technology, then they're, you know, they kind of, uh, you know, aren't as resistant to it once you learn how to use it. Yeah. I mean, I can I can understand that. There's some things with computers and stuff that I just don't feel like taking the time to learn. I just rather have somebody else pop up and show me how to do it because I don't want to take the time to do it. All right, let's see. So Fishing USA says, in my opinion, Fort Face and Sonar has technically been around for about six years. To be honest, there is only a handful of pros that are pure Fort Face and Sonar. It, it's not as easy as you think. So that is another thing. So think about this, guys six years and actually they've been using it for longer than that because this is 2024 i believe it came out in what 2015 2016 something like that that the pros have been using it the main thing that i have noticed the same way in fishing in general you have people that know how to use crankbaits you know people who can, who can skip docks you have people that are real good at punching grass locating the specific type of grass patches and all of that kind of stuff that is their skill now, when you get into Fort Face and Sonar, people just look at Fort Face and Sonar as just one thing, but it is not. There are people that can use Fort Face and Sonar very well in shallow water, but are terrible as soon as they get out offshore. There's guys that are used to using it offshore and going offshore, finding schools of fish or brush pals, but they are terrible when it comes to going out there and scanning around and catching those one single fish. Uh, fish those outliers that are just out there roaming by themselves now i think the main thing is the guys that are now that they're having the issue with are the ones that have found another way of using it and those are the snipers the, sc the scopers that's what they call them they generally call everyone a scoper but the thing that is specifically making the difference is the guys that are out able to go out there and pinpoint those specific fish and and they've gotten good enough to where they can kind of see if that fish is maybe in that five to eight pound caliber range or maybe it's a two to four pounder so they can target and not waste their time on those smaller fish if you know you need to call out a five pounder and you can tell that fish is a two pounder on that screen they're not even going to cast to it so there are guys who have perfected that that i think are in a different league with fort face and sonar so it's not necessarily fort face and sonar it's what the people have learned to do with it so what do you guys think about that? So think about it. The people that they're naming, look at the techniques and the lakes that they are on and how well they can use it to catch those one off fish. So I think that is a very different technique than what people have traditionally been using for facing sonar for. And those guys that have come up through the ranks through middle school, high school and college fishing. They've been out there for years. People, you may just be seeing them now and they look young to you, young in the game because they've only been out to visibly for maybe a year or less than a year but they've actually been out there playing in the backgrounds in middle school high school and college and now they're popping up on the scene and everybody's like where did this guy come from that's the only way he knows how to catch fish but is it really and that leads to another thing drop the names of the people that that are being referred to who is it specifically i mean if you're saying it go ahead and say it who are the names of the people that you're saying that if they took four face and sonar away, they have no other skills? Who?
Who are those guys? Who are they? Drop their names in the chat. So that will allow people to actually see if there's some legit legitimacy to that. Oh, my goodness, guys. Somebody just caught like a six pounder. Man. Hey, I'm running this on a split screen. I'm trying to keep up with a little bit of everything. No, that's not a six. Maybe about a, a five, maybe. But hey, anyway, it's a decent fish. And they haven't put his name on the screen yet, so I don't know who that is. But yeah, so who are the names of the anglers that have zero skills other than four facing sonar? Why isn't anybody just saying the names? I mean, obviously, we would know who they are. So that way, we can go ahead and check their history. If we look and see that they have no history, I mean, we've seen them skip a dock and all you're hearing is ding, ding, ding. They're hitting pontoons, hitting the sides of the, the docks. They can't skip docks. They can't fish shallow. They they don't throw. I mean, they don't have crankbait skills. They don't have anything but four facing sonar. Who are these guys that they're referring to? Drop them, drop some names in the chats, guys. Let's 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 look into it. Let's see. All right. So let's see. What does Keith say? Hank is smarter and wiser than the electronics nuts. Hank is right right on band for facing sonar now so yeah i was surprised that he actually just came out and said that hey it needs to get gone all right samuel says i was answering the question about who can't fish without fort facing sonar oh my god <laughs> oh samuel he's already ahead of me he's already saying like hey okay so does anybody know kyoto fajita's background what do you guys think? And so for me, one of the things that I did notice that he mentioned is one of the lakes where he is from, um, that it is a very high pressured lake and it is similar it is one of the closest lake lakes to the lakes over here. <laughs> All right. Watching Gerald Swindle on here, pull in a 10 pounder from 2007, but it is a lake that is close to the um, lakes in the United States. But it is very highly pressured. So he came from a place where they had to pretty much try new and innovative things on a regular basis. So he's. Yeah, I mean, he's he, he doesn't have the same background as what traditional fishing is here. So that could be a difference, too. But what do you guys think about that? What is his background on that? All right. Fishing USA says Willer and D.C. both agree they can get the job done with one nine inch or 12 inch graph. And I think they have both proven that. So maybe limit number of graphs. But four facing sonar is the new era we are in. All right. Let's see. Keith says an old graph is completely different than the new four facing sonar. It's apples and oranges. All right. Let's see the old and old graph. Yeah, I mean, each thing. I mean, side scan is different from just regular sonar. So all of the things are different. All of them would pretty much be apples and oranges, right? So if you took regular sonar and you took a flasher or if you took a um, side scan against a down scan, for instance, or what, live imaging against side scan, they're each, each, one of the, each one of those things have their own kind of like superpower, own thing that um, in, enhances the abilities of the person that is using it. All right, what's going on? We got I'm in a slump. I'm in a slump. What's good? What's good? Haven't seen you in a minute. Are you still in a slump? All right, he says, Hank's biggest sponsor was Hummingbird. Did he forget technology gets better and better every year since he started? Okay, all right. All right, let's see. Kitty cat meow. What is going on? We have kitty cat meow checking in. All right, says, why not take away spot lock? Trolling motors also did. Oh, man, don't take away my spot lock. Don't take away my spot lock. Can, do you guys remember the first time that you caught a fish and it was kind of windy, you know, a little choppy on the water? You caught a fish for the first time with spot lock. You caught the fish. You go back, get get the weight on it, put it in the live well and everything. You know, maybe you had to retire or something like that. You get up and walk back to the front of the boat. And you look around and you realize that you're still in the same spot and can just make the cast again. Meant that to me, the first time that that happened, it was, I don't even know what to compare it to, guys. I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. This is wonderful. This is a good thing right here. Don't take away my spot lock. Don't do it to me, kitty cat. <laughs> All right. All right. What does two fishes have to say? I agree with Brandon. All right. Let's see. However, uh. I'd have the anglers make a choice on what days to use Fort Facing Sonar and put regulations to only allow the use of one half the tournament days 
it let me see if it's a three-day tournament one and a half days all right all right so a compromise but hank parker said no compromise he said go ahead and get it gone i played it twice you guys heard exactly what he said guys all right so ken says i'm 63 i started with flat with a flasher and have went um through every change and now i love my active target so ken is like hey man i'm out here having some fun I want to see the fishes. I want to see the two fishes out there on my screen. I want to catch them. All right. So Kitty Cat says the sport is following technology. Well, I mean, so, yes, I think it's following the technology and following the money. I think they're kind of like one is moving. Then, you know, I think they're kind of moving together. I think it's a combination of the two. All right. So shout out to I'm in a slump says I'm 50 and love for facing sonar. Been fishing since I could walk. There we go. I think a lot of us were like that. Fishing in creeks and ponds and all that good stuff first. All right. So Ken says, I can't wait till I'm 70 and I'm using video graphs. <laughs> all right. It may be coming. Actually, Aquaview, there's already things out there. And this is a very interesting thing right here, guys. So I was speaking to a friend of mine several months ago. And he knows that I tournament fish. So he was like, hey, man, you know, I was talking to this guy at work and he was talking about how he fishes tournaments and how he uses this thing where he can see the fish underwater and whatever. And so I was like, oh, yeah, a graph. It's like a electronic screen. He was like, he was like, yeah. So he could actually, you know, see the fish's fin. I mean, see the fish. He kept saying he could see the fish moving around. And I was like, wait a minute. Are you talking about like a camera? And he said, yeah, yeah. He uses a camera. And I was like, wait a minute. It's aquaview he was like i don't know the name of it but yeah it's like a camera underwater where he can see the fish and i was like well i said yeah people actually do use that but you can't use it in tournaments tournaments and he was like oh you can't because he uses it he uses it in the tournaments i was like what he was like yeah yeah he talks about it all the time. <laughs> so he's actually using so guys man listen it's a crazy world out there it's kind of crazy so He's asked, so there are people that are out there that are actually using Aquaview cameras during tournaments. <sighs> Man, what's going on out here, guys? What is going on? All right, so I did. I see we have a few more people tuning in. Really appreciate everybody for tuning in. We're just doing a quick live stream during the Bassmaster Classic. We're going over the live leaderboard. I'm just seeing where your favorite anglers are at. And, then, you know, we kind of slid in a little segment here where we talk about some forward facing sonar, just trying to get some of your opinions. And I do drop a call in link. So if anybody wants to hit the call in link, come up and voice your thoughts or opinions on the topic that we're talking about. Hey, let's have the conversation, guys. You never know. You may learn something. Or not. Or not. You never know. Some people are going to stick to their guns and not change their mind about anything. All right. So Keith says. Hank and Randy are correct, and their facts and logic, uh, let me see, are irrefutable and undeniable. They're impeccable. They're irrefutable and undeniable. All right, let's see. The notorious Kevin Brooks. Oh, my goodness. Shout out to the notorious Kevin Brooks. What's going on, buddy? He says, I caught my first AI fish. Oh, my goodness. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, no. Uh-oh. What is Kevin talking about? He says, I caught my first AI fish fish it jumped off the hook and stole my boat oh no <laughs> ai fish are out here swimming around it's getting kind of it's getting kind of crazy it's getting crazy out here guys all right shout out to i'm in a slump says i couldn't do my job without technology all right some of these anglers it appears that people are saying the same thing with them saying they can't do the job without the technology but who are they referring to so we have one name some, we had a brave soul that stepped up and called out one name so is there only one angler that everybody's referring to but just don't want to say the names because we can check the history we can check that scope in history we can check out the scopes all right so eat squawk says ct may try to come up in a minute for a okay come up for a minute all right let us know what's going on out there at the bass master classic he's out there live doing live interviews all that good stuff all right i'm in a slump says i spent eight hours for three fish i have two four facing sonars i thought the fish just jumped in the boat oh yeah i mean sometimes you get out there and it's just fun watching your bait watching the fish follow it saying nah i'm not gonna bite it but i'll follow it i'll make you feel good while you're out here using your four facing sonar all right chris says the problem with banning four facing sonar from tease let me see is people like randy won't stop there he wants to eliminate forward facing sonar being used outside of um tournaments as well all right let me see libs like him always take a bite then want another they want to keep eating they want to eat on it 
They're like, hey, that first bite was kind of juicy. I want another bite. <laughs> I'm not going to stop. <laughs> All right. Shout out to Chris. All right. Ken says, my feeling is either step up and learn new technology or step out and move aside. You can't be out there fishing with worms and fishing from the bank anymore. You got to get the technology going on or just step to the side. Let us go flying by and blow you out with the wakes from our boats. All right. Hey, got to get with the program. All right. Shout out to Chad. Chad says, I saw Chris Zaldane say that Bass currently has a committee investigating and studying the Fort Facing Sonar impact and anticipates some type of changes of change in 2025 that is correct they're going and they're taking measurements from the height of the graph from the deck of the boat they're doing all of these fine details and some of it is from an insurance and safety standpoint as far as people being able to see over the grass at the consoles so yeah so they're definitely putting in some work and looking into it but we do not know where that is going to go and once again guys the um the link is in the chat if anybody wants to come up let me drop that call in link once again. Call in link. Basically, just make sure you are cammed up. I can bring you up and let you speak your piece on your thoughts on the topic that we're talking about. And let's see. So we'll be on here for a little bit longer, guys. Let's see. What? How do you pronounce this name? I'll just say let's. Oh, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's kind of unique. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Okay. You, you, you kind of put a spin on it. All right. All right. Good deal. Says no. They're more than not knowing how to use it. It's a conscious. Let me see, guys, my, my vision, my vision. It's a conscious that um, some have the most um, do not know. Live bait and technology. Nets are technology. Electronics. Le electric shock is technology. Oh, yeah. Let's get out there and shock some fish. That'll make it real easy. Get out there and just shock up the whole cove and just get them as they're floating. Might be a new tournament, uh, a new tournament trail. The Bass Shockers. All right, let's see. I'm in a slump, says it's not easy. It takes a whole nother level of fishing to perfect. All right, guys. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. All right, so let's do this real quick. Looks like we have somebody backstage that wants to come up and speak their piece. It may give us some inside scoops on what's going on, the scoops of what's going on at the Bassmaster Classic. All right, shout out to cerebral tackle what is going on sir how are you doing today uh-oh uh-oh do you have your audio on with ct ready all right we can't hear you sir so i'm going to drop you back down for a second and then whenever your audio is back did i hear you there we go there we oh, go there we go there we go what's going on sir how are you doing today I'm doing okay. I'm multitasking. Sorry. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So how are things going out there? You are live at the Bassmaster Classic. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going pretty good. The, uh, the media center last night was, was popping pretty good with everybody rolling through there. I'll have a video of that coming out here in just next little bit. Um, as far as the answer <clears throat> to the one poll question, Live scope is not as big a deal in this term as people think it is. Uh, there's a whole lot of hunting and pecking going on. And, uh, I mean, talking with the leader, Mr. Hamner, last night, um, man, he just went out there and did his thing. He just went out there and fished to his strength, his personal style. Uh, and even beforehand, when I spoke with him, he's like, you know what? I don't know how much it's going to be a part of this one. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is it being used? Yeah, but not like people think it is. Right. And you're and, hearing you that know, directly from the anglers as you're doing the interviews and, and things like that. Yeah, and, exactly. And, and just and, real and, quick, just real quick, so everybody knows the poll question that he's referring to is there's a poll in the chat. Just make sure you guys get active in the chat. The poll question is, is LiveScope playing a major role in the Bassmaster Classic? And what CT is saying, he is hearing it directly from the anglers themselves that it is not the answer to that is actually no but in the chat we have 69 percent are saying yes it is and we have 33 percent saying no but what is the real scoop on that ct you know it, the lake is sitting up where there's fish in all different stages right now um there's still a whole lot of pre-spawn going on but they're still not being caught as effectively as they normally would be okay because right now it just got them in a mixed bag. I mean, there's active fish, but I mean, it is hunting and pecking and it's just like, it's a, you know, what show out there right now. 
these guys are actually making the lake look good at the moment. I mean, <laughs> yeah. seriously, they're they're making it look good um, because it is not fishing as good as as even it looks, and the weights just aren't blowing the doors off of people. Decent weights, but no, it, it is it isn't what it should be. It's not what it would normally be. And um, as far as uh, you know, what what's crazy is like all the talk on the forward facing sonar that we're seeing is all coming from the same source. And there's no one doing any research or talking to anglers or getting to know them. People are assuming they don't do anything but live scope and they're wrong. Uh, because if you, you know, I don't, you don't hear, I guess what I'm trying to say is you don't hear it from anybody who has actually had two words of conversation with these guys mm -hmm. who has actually got the chance to interview them or get to know them or anything. You're hearing it from somebody who heard it from somebody who heard it from Randy. And that's nowhere to go. And don't get me wrong. I love Hank Parker to death. Uh, he actually introduced me to a very, was a very good friend for a long time before he passed. He was uh, one of Hank's friends and become a mutual friend of mine as well. I have a lot of respect for Hank. He was uh, my, my fishing idol growing up as a kid. Uh, but friends can tell friends are wrong. And when you're wrong, you're wrong. And he's wrong. And, and the key word is, is when he said, the more he listens to Randy. That's, hmm. I mean, in other words, he's not researching for himself. He's not talking to anybody himself. The more he listens to somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about, it's just more of convincing of a person of an argument that doesn't exist than actually getting facts. And that's just... That's just kind of how it is, because it, when you talk to these young guys, mm -hmm. like that young man, Trey McKinney, I've got news for people. I don't care that he's 19. The cat's a stick. I guarantee you, we all could have benefited from being that good of an angler at that young of an age. Right. So let that me ask you this. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I have kind of put out there to the chat is name the anglers that people are referring to, because what Hank Parker said was there are some anglers out there that basically would not be able to, I'm kind of paraphrasing, be able to mm -hmm. fish and compete at a, at a higher level without. And, four and, I, get, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if you ask him to name an angler, he couldn't. Right. So, I mean, we, I mean, so I mean, right I mean, now, right now, we've only had one name that came up in the chat and that was uh, Fajita. Can, can yeah. You, can we, and and the, yeah, the lake that's being referred to is, is Lake Biwa. And here's, here's a trick with Lake Biwa. Because it is the real bass lake of record in Japan, it gets absolutely hammered. That's why we get all the incredible JDM techniques and baits is because a lot of those bait companies actually have their research labs. And I'm saying real honest to goodness labs on the banks of Lake Biwa, meaning that if it catches a fish on Biwa, it will catch a fish here in our most pressured waters. Right. But it has nothing. It doesn't have a freaking thing one to do with live scope. Because I was out hammering them with the uh, Federation Nation just in state championships, just bashing them on JDM Bates. When the only thing people had against JDM Bates was that they were made in Japan. You don't know how many boaters I had say. I don't want to use that Japanese crap. Well, fine. When I'm done kicking your butt with it, you'll ask again what it was called. Yeah. And so one of the things about that is, uh, Kenneth, what lake was that where we were watching? Uh, was it Lake Fork where they were using that bait called the Koi K? The Koi K? Yes. Yes. Right. That thing, if, if we were to see that sitting on a shelf, just the average angler, we would have no idea that that mm -hmm. is a, a bait that they yeah. are using at these high level events that they actually got from Japan, because mm -hmm. in, a, in a sense, what we're saying is at that, at coming from Japan to here is almost like taking candy from a, uh, take what, what is it? Stealing uh, candy from a kid, whatever you, however you put it, because their lakes are so pressured that their baits are more advanced there because if they were to use the same basic baits and things that we use here, the fish are, so pressured that they do not bite them so when they come here they're already using those way advanced 
um, baits and everything to where the fish has not seen those things before. We haven't even seen them. And I have no idea what that koi K is supposed to be imitating, but they're crushing it. They're crushing it. And there are yeah. anglers here on the elites and everything that have now seen that and they keep them hid on their boat. It just happened to be that one of the cameramen kind of slid in and zoomed in on that. And we were all looking like, what is that? So we went on a search and we find we finally found it. And then we saw all these alien alien looking baits that they're that they're using so it's to me it's just another level that we're not really used to seeing but back to the thing about the fort facing sonar and and the and naming names so right now we've only heard i've only seen one come up in the chat so when people are saying this why not just say the name i mean how many anglers are there fishing in the bass masters um on the elites and in uh what is it uh major league fishing there's there's a, uh, if you total all of them together, it's less than 200. Right. So why not just who are the who are they referring to? Just say the people's names that they're referring to. And then I think once you do that, like people were saying that about Trey McKinney. Right. But then mm -hmm. they saw him go and, you know, he started catching some fish shallow. But if they look and see that these kids have come up through middle school, through high school, through college, and now they're in the pros. How long does it take to get a doctorate? Do you know? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, exactly. About I mean, it also depends years. on so how. If, so <laughs> if, if they have been doing this since the money. if they have been doing this since middle school, by the time that they finish college and now they are out on these higher level trails, they have the equivalent of a eight years exactly a doctor in in technology and mixed in with some of the old school skills that they have learned in a, at an accelerated rate through YouTube, through coaches through people that are mentoring them. And I think people aren't really taking that into consideration. They're just saying like, hey, it took me 30 years to figure out the exact angle and things, how to skip these docs like this. How can this kid do it when he's 22 years old? Like, who Yeah. See, and that, see, that's another thing is there's a lot of people that, that are hating just to hate because of the age. With so much of stuff I've heard on Train McKinney was all just, you know, forward facing sonar, scoping, scoping, scoping. One guy had the audacity to come over to my chat and say, Oh, you know, I watched him all day. You know, he made three attempts at skipping under dock, couldn't hit it, got frustrated and left. Uh, wrong. Because I had a follow boat on him that day. And I was like, really? So tell me what color your boat was. And I asked my buddy where you're at. Well, 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 uh, you, you shut up. Gotcha. And as a matter of fact, he was, he wasn't around, he wasn't around docks to do it. So, I mean, it was like, you know, just. It's, it's people that's why they're not wanting to name names because they really got nothing in their bag and they might have a small resemblance of a conscience that says i might not should just lie on somebody and just throw out a name when i know darn well it's not true right and other people are going to do it anyway but i mean it's just there's a misconception and the misconception comes from people being on in their armchairs which is fine not dogging it but what I'm gonna, what I will dog out is in people making their opinions based on on other people solely upon that. Gotcha. All right, CT. So I appreciate you for coming up. I'm only gonna be on here for a few more minutes, but let me go ahead and drop you down and make sure you guys go and check out CT Cerebral Tackle on YouTube. He is live at the Bassmaster Classic, dropping a lot of content. But I really appreciate you for coming up, CT. We'll be looking forward to those videos. Yeah, All I'll right. Catch you later, man. All right. Appreciate you. All right, so big shout out to CT, guys. Came up and dropped a little knowledge regarding some of the Fort Facing Sonar and the things that are going on at the Bassmaster Classic. So for me, I, I would say that there's validity to, to kind of, you know, both sides of the argument in a sense. But some of the things, like how when people are saying there are guys that have made it to this elite level that have no other skills, if you take that away from them, then they're done. Who are you referring to? Just, I mean... And let them prove themselves. I mean, Trey McKinney, people were saying that about him, right? People were saying that. And so the people that we have now mentored and got them up to a certain level that they have, they have learned at an accelerated rate, it's like we build them up to tear them back down now. Because is it really true that that is their only skill level? And if it is not, isn't that kind of doing a disservice to those younger anglers that we're saying we're growing the sport and bringing them into? So who are the guys that you're referring to? I'm not saying that, that people aren't right, but just who? If you're making blanket statements, then that kind of casts a shadow on everybody 
that is coming up through the ranks like that, that have been mentored into the sport that we are looking to drive it further and take it over. Um, so, yeah, I, I dropped the call in link, guys. Nobody else wants to come up and, and speak their piece about what do they think about the topic. All right. So, yeah, I see you guys have had um, some good conversations in the chat. Let me just scroll through here real quick and see. Um, if I can pull up one or two more content comments real quick. All right, so we have Kevin Two Fishes. Shout out to the money team. Really appreciate it. If anybody enjoys the content and wants to support the channel, click the join button down below. It will give you some information about becoming a member of the channel. And those are the people that I refer to as the money team. All right, so Kevin Two Fishes says, I'd be surprised if Bass or MLF got rid of Fort Facing Sonar. That's why I think regulating the number of days it's used in some tournaments would give time for anglers to do both. All right. So what I do in this speed round, guys, is I go through here and any members of the money team that have dropped some comments. I pull those up real quick. All right. So, yeah. OK, let's see. What does Brett say? Shout out to the money team again. He says, thanks, CT, for the coverage. Oh, yeah. CT is out there putting in work, guys. Make sure you go and check out some of the good footage that he has on the behind the scenes that's going on out there. All right, so I don't see too many members of the money team in here getting active. So, all right, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the discussion. Just wanted to drop in for a quick minute, but I will be back again so we can continue checking out some of the things that are going on at the Bassmaster Classic and rooting for our favorite anglers, guys. All right, I really enjoyed the conversation, guys. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and actually, the likes, guys, my likes are looking ugly. They're looking terrible. Can you please hit the like button on the way in if you did not already hit it? And if you're in here, guys, just tap the like button for me. It really, really does help out the channel. I will be back again so we can continue enjoying these great conversations. All right, guys, just checking to see if anybody else was clicking the link. All right, guys, so I will see you guys on the next live stream.